that, I guess the first thing I would say is that I I am disappointed in that this. I was right about a whole bunch of shit not being shown. Yeah. Um, well, no it would Hellblade, be that I am though. disappointed in what we just saw. To be honest with you, mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't terrible. Um, I've definitely seen worse from Xbox. Yeah. But I guess there, I there just, was no 15 minute ESPN presentation. Right. Right. So. I've definitely seen worse, uh, particularly when they've announced new consoles in yeah. the past. Um, but it to me, I felt like this was Microsoft's chance to really kind of get kind of ahead of PlayStation or have a chance to maybe jump ahead of PlayStation a little bit with PlayStation not appearing Mm at E3. I feel like maybe it's a little bit of a squandered opportunity. Um, We got a Starfield trailer, but was it really? Like, Mm. I don't know. I I feel a little hollow coming off of this. How do you feel kind of overall? I mean, this is about what I expected. Um, There was actually a little less high-end third-party stuff in it than I expected. I thought we'd see Call of Duty. I thought we'd see, you know, I guess we got Battlefield instead. Yeah, I mean, most um, of the third-party stuff was indie stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, there was Far Cry in there, the a new gameplay trailer for Far Cry 6, mm-hmm. but... Far Cry is back for blood. There's, uh, you know, there's some stuff in there, but it wasn't quite what I thought. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of smaller-scale things in the middle there. When we started seeing, like, indie indie game trailers for things we already knew about but with a release date added I knew that that was basically all we were getting yeah um but yeah you know, no avowed no uh, no hellblade unfortunately no but no avowed no elder scrolls no How perfect about dark that? no hellblade no fable no everwild um no Forza no, Motorsport, no, Forza no, Mo- Bright, Memory no Bright Memory Infinite, no, no arc, arc 2. 2 I thought there would be arc 2 <laughs> I really did I mean it's funny if you look at this list that we had the rundown for the pre-show almost Hardly mm-hmm. any of them appeared. Yep. That's crazy, I think. You got Halo, Starfield, Project Omen, and Stalker 2 and Forza Horizon. Yeah, that's it. That's less than half of what mm-hmm. we had talked about before the show started. And meanwhile, there were, I don't know, of the 30 games, 20 indies? In there, yeah. Or at least got, smaller scale. You got Starfield, on. Stalker 2, Back for Blood... Does you, I mean, Redfall, Psychonauts too. Is that Psychonauts indie game? Too. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was backed on Fig. It was. I think yeah. it, it partly qualifies at least. I would think. I mean, it's more than twenty were indie games. Yeah, that's. I mean, games. you leave that to like the IGN show, Keeley's Summer Games Fest mm-hmm. thing. I mean, this wasn't all that dissimilar from the smaller shows that we've been seeing from yeah, publications. Yeah, but it's also sort of part of the whole, you know. The, after the year we just had and where we are in the generation, like, you know, you got to adjust some expectations. I guess. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's going to be an off year in some ways. Um, but there's still some stuff in there. You know, Halo at least looked better. They, they did not go in as hard for Halo as I expected them to. I Me guess, either. I guess they will do a, a, another campaign sort of reveal later in the summer. I mean, we said on our prediction show for Game Face that we thought they you would see, focus like a, on multiplayer. Yeah, and they did. They did. But the single player that they showed, it's like, I don't think anyone who was nervous about the campaign after the last campaign showing feels any better today. No. I mean, it didn't. we didn't see any gameplay. No. It was just like this little cinematic between Chief and an AI. Mm-hmm. And then the multiplayer, like, it was a good trailer, but I, I felt like there needed to be, like, explanation, explaining, mm-hmm. like, the new stuff, like, stuff, and I'm sure, you know, Halo fans are going to dig into that, and they're going to do their little stop-motion stuff and point out, look at this, this is new, look at this new weapon, look at this new whatever feature on the map, look at this new vehicle. Like, I feel like Microsoft should have done that and talked about some of the new stuff that's coming to multiplayer instead of just showing a trailer of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, there was no deep dive on it at all. It's just, like, here's this trailer that... I mean, that wouldn't have really been very in character for this whole presentation. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm a pretty big Halo fan. I've played every Halo game, and there was some stuff in there that, like, I didn't recognize, and I wanted to know what it was and how it was going to work. Like, I don't know. I just... Mm-hmm. It seems like you could have cut, like, four or five of those small indie games and really blown out Halo Infinite if it indeed is coming in holiday 20... I mean, not giving us a release date for it. Like, that... I don't know, man. Like, I keep trying to give this game, like, chances, mm. and I feel like it keeps spitting in my face. I don't know. Am I, I overreacting? That, yeah. I, I think they will probably come back at it with a more spotlight on Halo itself, like, presentation at some point later in the summer. 
um, you know, sort of like what they did with where they blew it the first time, <laughs> um, except hopefully to, yeah, as a redemption arc, I guess. Um, yeah, it looks, but I, I don't, I don't have a lot of perspective on the Halo thing just because I don't really care. Like Halo Four and Five really lost my my goodwill. I mean, I agree series. they weren't up to scratch, but um, I still enjoyed playing them for the most part. I didn't. Yeah. Really, I in part because I don't play the multiplayer much. Right. But like, I thought the campaigns were just four and five. I mean, I don't. I I have a hard time deciding which campaign I liked less. Um, maybe five, probably. Just, I and it's just like so much stuff. Where it's like, ah, oh, the Promethean weapons suck. Fighting Promethean sucks. Like all that stuff just didn't work for me. So like, Halo Infinite's got to got to do a lot of work to win me back. Um, I don't fully expect it to. So kind of like watching. The, I mean, I didn't expect what happened last year with it. I was not ready for that. Obviously. Yeah. And like I'm, I'm willing to give it a chance, but it's just sort of like, is it, is it, you know, does it make or break my day? Whether Halo shows up and and impresses, not really. Like I was more interested in Horizon Five, and um, you know, it's nice to see Starfield actually, you know, show its show its face, even if we didn't see much. Get a release date, that's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, this is about what I thought we were gonna get. It was more indie stuff versus third party, like larger stuff, as compared to like what might have been a Microsoft conference ten years ago. But uh, in general, yeah, like this is about on par with what I expected. I mean, it's it's like while you're watching the presentation, it's easy to just kind of watch each piece. But mm-hmm. if I start like just really going through the list of what was shown, I think it, it makes an impact. So you had it started off great. You had Starfield. You had Stalker Two, which looks great. Trailer was a little. All. I thought that was maybe a, a little bit of a buzzkill to start the the event yeah, with. That's about as exciting as you're going to make a stalker game look. You're probably right. But like, but so you, the you put it in the middle or something. But also, once you see everything that was in that, the placement makes a little more sense. I guess. Um, Back for Blood, and here's where it just kind of just goes into whatever. Contraband, Sea of Thieves, Yakuza on Game Pass, Battlefield 2042, look good. 12 minutes, Psychonauts 2, Bethesda games on Game Pass, Fallout 76, Party Animals, Hades, Somerville. Then Halo, right in the middle, basically. Um, Diablo 2 Resurrected, A Plague Tale, Requiem, Far Cry 6. So they did kind of bring some good stuff back in the middle mm-hmm. there. Slime Rancher 2, I can't read my writing, Atomic Heart. Um, from there, it was just trash until you got to the end with mm-hmm. with the new game. Uh, what's it called again? Uh, Redfall. Redfall and Forza Horizon 5. I... I don't know. I just think it was a missed opportunity. My expectations were definitely higher than what were was delivered here. There's a hu- ton of huge games that weren't mentioned, games that had been shown before. Um, we talked in the pre-show. We weren't expecting really Fable to show up. Um, we, I think both of us were kind of leaning towards no on State of Decay. Uh, but there's still a handful of games there, some of which have been shown like multiple times mm. that just disappeared. Which so, ones? Uh, Everwild. You know, yeah. it's, it's already well, been I mean, shown twice. Well, I, I think I made clear I didn't expect to see Everwild today. Yeah, I that, did. That game is in a weird nebulous development haze that I don't think is coming out of for a while. Yeah. Um, and no real surprises either, um, if you no. think about it. I mean, I guess – not. I mean, we knew that Arcane was doing something, but we didn't know that. So yeah. that was that was fun. What do you think of that game, Redfall? Looks cool. I like, thought it looked really cool. Yeah. Do you think that's what it is? Like one side is like has guns and the other side is vampires, or what do you mean? Like, is it a multiplayer game or no? A it's campaign? an open world game. Oh, okay. So which you which you can play co op. Oh, okay, gotcha. Well, that makes more sense then. Yeah. I think. Um, I don't think I don't think other players are playing the vampires. Oh, okay. It's just it's just you can play like four player. It'll say you can play four player co op against vampires. It's like I don't know. Uh, until dawn. With vampires and co-op. Concept looks cool. Yeah. The trailer was fun. Like superpowers and all that. Sh- yeah, all that looked fun. What impressed you the most in the whole show? Forza. Yeah. Forza Horizon 5. Mm-hmm. It was easily. Which should be like the most known quantity imaginable, but instead it was like, oh, no. Yeah, I mean, I'm it was easily in. the most next-gen looking thing yeah. in the presentation. I mean, other than like Flight, or flight Simulator, but that's yeah. not really the same I thing. I don't know if that counts even. But, yeah, I mean, it was the stunner of the whole presentation. It got the most time. So Microsoft so did, figured it out. Yeah, this is the game that makes the mm-hmm. biggest impact. It makes our hardware yeah. look Com- as good in- as possible. Yeah, once, we, once you know what they had to show for Halo, Forza Horizon 5 definitely makes sense as the anchor yeah. for the whole thing. Um, but in the middle there, like, so you have a strong – Pretty strong start. Pretty good. A pretty good middle and a pretty good end. Everything else in between, like, I feel like I didn't even need that to be in a press conference, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Like, this it could have easily been an hour 
Yeah, they, they definitely took a kitchen sink approach to to just let's just so, show everything that's even remotely ready to be shown for Game Pass. I mean, um, it was a big yeah. Game Pass commercial. But and the, so my disappointment is, if you think about it, in the past, Matt, you had these two huge publishers. You had Xbox and you had Bethesda. That could, for the most part, Bethesda some years, little shaky. Yeah. But for the most part, could on their own support an hour-long press conference at E3. So you come to a 90, which didn't even end up being 90 minutes, but you plan a 90-minute press conference with the two of them combined. You think it's just going to be quality from beginning to end, and it just doesn't work out that way. Maybe I set my expectations too high. I don't know. I think so. I'm just basing it on my experience of dealing with both of these. Also, I'm not... I don't see a lot of lack of quality in in anything they showed, with a couple of exceptions. Like even the indie indie isn't a dirty word to me. Like I don't yeah. think showing. I mean, those I don't. Are bad. I don't either. I'm just looking at the health of the business and indie games. They're filler generally between the big releases. Mm. I didn't see enough. The big business releases. is fine. The business is selling better than it has ever. Like we're good. I don't know about that, Matt. Uh, I mean, the, the numbers we're just hold- dealing with a business that can afford to lose money infinitely. The business of what? Microsoft? Yeah, and Xbox. Do you I mean, think it's making money? I mean, their stuff... They're I, selling no games. I think the Game Pass is their their model for that. But what I am saying is, uh, for a while, not so much as PlayStation 5, but they sold consoles as fast as they could as fast as they could make them for a long time. And still, they don't last too long. They last 15 minutes on Walmart's site as opposed to 15 seconds for yeah. PS5s. Um, I think they're doing fine for what they're where they are. Um, their big guns are not ready yet and won't be ready till next year at the earliest. Um, and it's just, you know, how do you feel about Starfield? And not until end of the year next year. I mean, I was predicting 2023 at one point, yeah. so I'm pretty happy with that, frankly. They gotta hit it now. Yeah, I mean, they've com- the they committed the to trailer, that date. <laughs> you gotta hit the date it. Date is on the the control. Pa- it wasn't even like a CG. It was like no, it, was it was in the in render the texture. Like, yeah. yeah, it was like <laughs> you put that in the in the storyboard. So yeah. you better be ready for that. And, you know, like like they point out in the chat. That's the Skyrim release date, so it makes way too much sense just yeah. in terms of you know parallels. We, I'm surprised neither neither one of us picked up on maybe they'll try to do it on that date. You yeah, know? well, to be I mean, Skyrim came out a very long time ago, so I yeah. forgot what day it came out. Yeah, you know, yeah. 11, 11, 11. Yeah, so they like to pick those dates like yeah. that. Apparently, um, all right, we're gonna give although you- se- February twenty second, twenty twenty two would have been good. Even better. <laughs> a, little, a little earlier. Yep. Okay, so we're going to give you our letter grades for the Microsoft slash Bethesda press conference. Before we do, a word from our sponsor. It's time to find out why everyone is buying homes in Montana. The Shazer Ryan Realty has a totally remodeled four-bedroom, three-bath home for sale in Libby, Montana. Nestled next to the mountains on Libby Creek, this split-level home features almost 3,300 square feet of living space. It includes a fully finished basement, a two-car garage, a barn, a shop, and much more. There's a covered back porch just off the kitchen, so you can enjoy your morning coffee the way nature intended. At $479.9, it's an absolute steal. They're selling homes as fast as they can list them. So if you're interested, do not hesitate to call Doug DeShazer at 406-291-1643. Even if you don't live in Montana, you can contact the professionals at DeShazer Ryan Realty and they can help you with property in your area. For more, head to DeShazerRyanRealty.com. That's DeShazerRyanRealty.com. All right, Matt, it's time to give a letter grade for Xbox Mm -hmm. and Bethesda. What are you thinking? I'm going to give that a B minus. Okay. I more or less enjoyed it and thought kind of what it was more or less what I expected it to be. Uh, I was hoping to see Hellblade. Um, I was hoping to see a little more redemption arc on Halo, but uh, for the most part, kind of what I thought we were getting going in. A little, uh, certainly more indie filler, but I also don't mind most of that. Like, uh, like I certainly think you could say this was an off year, probably for everybody, um, especially if this is what Microsoft had. But, uh, but I didn't hate it. I didn't. I was mad at it. Okay, I'm gonna go with a C. And I'm almost feeling a little bit generous giving it the C. Um, so would that mean you you if you gave it a less than that would you lower Ubisoft's or do you think this is on see par that's with my Ubisoft? problem that's my rub you, is, you've locked yourself into a a, a floor for yeah, Ubisoft yeah I, I can't I, feel I mean like, I'll allow you to change the Ubisoft grade if you want to I'm, I'm not I'm not a like I, I believe it was better than Ubisoft's press conference yeah. and so I can't but give that's it the, the only same reason grade. it's getting a C <laughs> pretty much yeah right. I'll be honest with you Matt like it is we had to. I had to get up early to get all this stuff set mm. up, and so I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. So that might be part of it. 
But I'll be honest with you, I started like almost dozing off in the middle. I mean, of I yawned a few times. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's bad. Yeah. In an E3 press conference, like <laughs> I, my expectations are set firmly in check for this E3. Frankly, I should okay. just I just think it's it's uh, it's it's a it's a clawback. Year yeah. In a lot of ways, from multiple multiple uh, senses. So I I'm, I wasn't I'm not terribly disappointed in what was actually shown. Mm-hmm. I'm a little disappointed in it. But it's that they didn't really show anything either. Mm-hmm. It's like we really didn't see any gameplay from like any of this stuff. We saw mm-hmm. Forza Horizon 5, which, hey, it's the game that made the biggest impact in the press conference for me. Because I got to see it being played and see it in engine and see mm-hmm. what this this new generation of hardware is capable of. That gets me excited. I didn't see a lot of that in this. I saw a bunch of pre-rendered CG stuff. Like, again, you're taking, when you're doing like your presentation like this, like a Nintendo Direct or whatever you want to call the template, you're taking so much risk in production issues out of it. Mm-hmm. You should be able to do awesome stuff. Like these should not, I should not be dozing off during these. Like they're, they, they just shouldn't. Yeah. And like, as we were saying to, while we were doing our live commentary during the press conference, like by the time I got halfway into this, I'm like, why am I being forced to watch all this stuff that I don't even want to see stacked in the order that they're giving it to me? There was no personality in the presentation. People were in it at the beginning and they basically just virtually disappeared for the whole thing. It's like, I felt like I was watching a YouTube playlist. Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, that's sort of the style now. That's how but it But typically, works. like, Nintendo has some, like, flavor and human beings that step in frequently to intro stuff and give you context for stuff. This was literally, mm. eight, 75% of it was just trailer, yeah, dip to I'm, black, trailer, dip to black. I mean, that's what everything is now. I mean, I'm kind of okay with that. Like, I, I'm not, I don't have a preference between this and, like, having someone stiltedly stand in front of a camera on a Nintendo Direct and read a very pre-prepared script. Like, it's... it's. I like it if, if, like, one, if the person has personality, that's great. Pete Hines is great on camera. Like, I would have no problem if he explained something about Redfall to us. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's the lack of context. Like, just watching these trailers, like... I was like, is Redfall a multiplayer shooter where one side plays zomb- or, uh, vampires, the other side plays humans? Like, Well, he said that, though. He said it's an open-world game where you can play solo or play with co-op with friends. Yeah, but anyway, like, it. well, I've, maybe I'm taking notes or whatever. Like, I missed it. But mm-hmm. I'm in talking generally throughout the presentation, like, I felt like I was trying to guess what a lot of the stuff was that they were showing me. Like, what kind of game is mm-hmm. this? I don't know. A Little Mystery is fine. But when you walk away from the presentation, and I feel like 60 to 70% of the games that I were shown to me, I was kind of clueless about. Like, I don't know. I feel like with this format, there are advantages to it and disadvantages to it. And I felt like this one did not take as much advantage of the the positive parts of doing presentations like this as it could have. So mm. um, just explaining why I'm a little disappointed in it. Overall, it was probably fine. I, I feel like probably if you're a hardcore Xbox fan, you probably loved it. And if you're watching this right now, they're probably like, shit, you're crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. I get that. But from me, someone who really doesn't side with any platform, like, I was disappointed in it. I expected Mm. more. I came in wanting more. I should never be on the fringe of dozing off during an E3 press conference and and arguably the biggest one of the year, I guess. I mean, I've just done that more often in my life, I guess. (laughs) I've never have. I mean, uh, I didn't doze off, but I could feel like... Not always because I was bored. My eyes were getting heavy because my brain just wasn't engaged. Well, not always because I was bored because sometimes I just haven't had enough sleep. Right. But... uh, No, I I think they showed what they had to show. Like, I, you know, you talk about want more gameplay. I don't think a lot of that was ready. Like, I... You're talking about all these newly acquired studios that are working on new projects, and then you had the plague year that screwed everybody up in terms of timing. Like, this is about as good as you're going to get here. Like, yeah. And, and I was kind of prepared for that. So we'll see. I feel like they could have chopped it way down. You could have. I mean, you didn't need this to be 90. You know, you could have left out a bunch of the, you know, you could have left out 12 minutes and some of those other smaller things, the weird party animal thing. Like, sure. Yeah. But, like, you know, they want everything that was possibly ready to show. I think they showed because they wanted to show that they had stuff. But in they the had pipeline. showed games before. They didn't show here. So at one point they were ready mm-hmm. to show them. Then they're not ready to show them now. Well, like, I don't know what games you're talking about when you say that. Everwild. They've shown it Everwild. Twice. Everwild's not a game yet. How do like, you know that? Because that's what the developers said in the interviews at E3 last year. They said we're still trying to find the game. We're just making this that world. That was a year ago. Well, they're not found it yet. <laughs> I mean, have you you have heard of Rare before, right? Yes. Like they I have. take a while. Yeah, but they're. I mean, 
trying to say rare today is the same as rare from the N64 days or whatever, that's not... Yeah, but they still take a while. Even Sea of Thieves took them a year to get it after release to get it into like some kind a of ship shape. shape. Yeah, um, it's uh, you know, it, as as Gabe Newell says, these things take time. Yeah, um, apparently. But uh, yeah, Everwild is a is a long way. Ever, Everwild feels like it's in some kind of development hell situation right now. Um, whatever that game is going to be, it's taken them a while to figure out what it is. It feels like they from their from their interviews sounds like they built a world. And then s- there's decided, nothing to do in it. And then decided to say, okay, what game should happen here? <laughs> it's and it's like that, which feels backwards to, to me. But like, yeah, that's know. rare in 2021. Yeah, apparently. pretty much. Hey, we're gonna take uh, questions from you guys. If you have any questions or want some insight about anything from what we just saw from Xbox in Bethesda, um, it actually is gonna work out okay because. We are going to actually have a little bit of a break before we have to dive into Square Enix, which is good. Square but we'll- is what 12:15. Yep. Pacific. We'll, we'll yeah. be back at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern to mm-hmm. start the pre-show for Square Enix. So we'll have at least a five-minute break so Matt and I can run out and hit the bathroom real quickly. Uh, let's see if you got any questions. I see Veritas is accusing me of wanting to hate the Xbox <laughs> press. Come on, dude. That's absurd. I don't want to hate anything. Like, how do people not get this about me at this point, Matt, that I am an equal opportunity mm-hmm. Lover hater. and hater. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Like, I have no biases. Yeah, this is not this is not Shane wanting to hate anything. This is Shane having unrealistic expectations it of is things. Being honest. It's funny how, like, people just can't accept someone being honest anymore. Mm-hmm. Everyone's got to have a freaking agenda. It's, that's not the way it is, Veritas. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Mark Simpson. Any ironclad reasons to splash out on the next-gen Xbox consoles yet? I only bought into the last gen over Sea of Thieves, uh, disappointed greatly at beta test, and mm. Elite Dangerous. However, the backwards, backwards compatible stuff saved me too much disappointment. Uh, lack of 4 to 8 terabyte onboard storage is still worrying me. Um, I mean, I am pretty happy with my Series X just because, not, not that there's tons of exclusives for it, but because it's the best between that and the PS5, for me, it's the best multi-platform experience. Like, it's a little more powerful. It runs stuff a little better. I have more storage space because I put a big four terabyte external hard drive in it, and you get roughly the same. You know, that that leaves enough room for the Xbox Series X enhanced stuff to be on the internal, and I haven't run out of room yet for that. Yeah. Um, because it does have more space. Just even your basic internal hard drive has has an extra like 200 gigs. Uh, over the PS5. Um, like I'm happy with it. I, I play it the most of the two because the PS5 is pretty much an exclusive box for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll say this to Mark's question: the hard drive space has made a big difference in wit in like how I look at each console. Mm-hmm. Um, I do not have expansions for either one of them yet for storage. And yeah, I have so- a four terabyte SSD I, external. I stuck a SATA thing mm-hmm. I stuck into the I got an adapter that adapts SATA to USB and I stuck yeah. it into the thing and, and any not you know not the stuff that says XS enhanced but like last gen stuff and that kind of thing installed on that you, there's almost no difference between being installed on that and the internal for those games yeah it, it, if, you know, if you try to install the uh, an XS one on that it will warn you you should put this on the internal but um, it's been very good about doing that and moving it but yeah, I had to move Fallen Order because they updated that to be you know have the next gen update so I moved it to the internal hard drive it took like 30 seconds or something wow. it, it was yeah. nothing great. it was it, like it's all really smooth and i do not have external storage for the ps5 i should probably get some of that the but extra I, 400 gigs that you get with series it matters it matters because yeah. what i find is i install all the free-to-play stuff or mm-hmm. a lot of third-party stuff on my xbox console yep i leave my playstation 5 for like the exclusive yep. stuff or Same. i do like if they ask me for if i'm like requesting code from a publisher and they're like which one do you want and if it's like a game where i feel like it's actually pushing like gen 9 i will generally ask for playstation 5 i don't know why that is but that yeah, neither seems- do i because I, I think the xbox is a slightly more powerful system on it paper. might be um i feel i don't know if something's built for playstation 5 i will certainly li- but most of the stuff that's really built for playstation 5 is made by sony yeah so so i have seen myself when i first got them I played PS5. I mm-hmm. play series more now. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously right now I'm playing Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Right. Because it, there, there's actually exclusive games worth playing coming out on mm-hmm. PlayStation. So um, I think the si- the hard drive size has played a yeah. big difference for me, more than I expected. And look, as soon as Sony finally gets off their ass and tells me which inter- which 
SSD drive I can buy to put into the PS5 as an, a secondary internal drive, I will do that, and that will yeah. solve a lot of the problems. But they are really not doing that. I mean, we, they said they were going to do that at launch, and we're you know we're more than six months out, and they're still like, oh, there's nothing out that's fast enough yet. So we'll just tell you when that happens. And I'm like, okay, get on with it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's just it's just an ongoing issue, and uh, I mean I still haven't. Also, I refuse to shell out the what is it two hundred bucks for the stupid extra one terabyte yeah. internal for the Xbox? Like I'm yep. not doing that either. Me but either. like, nope. It's just the storage thing is a problem all around. But I, I feel like I have man- managed to circumvent it more effectively with Xbox right now. But I wouldn't say like Xbox is a Series X is a must buy right now. Not until it's no. something you definitely want to. Twenty twenty two is looking great. Yeah, <laughs> like if you're a serious Forza Horizon yeah. five fan, I guess like yeah. that's your that's your in. But uh, for now, I don't find it essential. I just find it pleasant. Yeah. Um, and I would also say, you know, in the end, especially once their, you know, their exclusive engine gets rolling with the, you know, Obsidian and, and Playground and Bethesda, et cetera, uh, you're going to have to own both of them. Yeah. Like, there's going to be too many exclusives on both things. Which everyone should be doing anyway, yeah. I believe. Unless you have a PC that can run all the best, all this stuff anyway. I mean, obviously, you need a platform that can play Xbox exclusives. You need a platform. You need a PlayStation 5, I would say. And whatever Nintendo puts out next. Yep. Um, the, more and more, the exclusives are the reason to play these things. That was Xbox's problem for a long time, was they had no exclusives that made it worthwhile. And I think they are finally going to turn that around in about a year and a half. It's not coming as fast as I thought it would. I guess I'll put it... To I you mean, that way. Game dev is a slow slow grind at any time, and then when you have a, a global pandemic interrupt everybody, like, yeah, you're going to lose a year there or so. I feel like we've projects. lost more than that. I don't think we have. This yeah. is uh, Starfield is still actually coming out sooner than I thought it would, even before 2020. Um, Fight JK says, did I have my coffee today? I don't drink coffee. I have not drank a cup of coffee since 1998, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> I never drink coffee. I, I don't like coffee, so I don't drink that either also um, coffee makes me like randomly angry coffee makes, makes me, me irritable. feel like i'm on drugs and then feel like i want to go to sleep i don't <laughs> like, have that like but 20 I, minutes later i definitely feel it though i feel like i'm like mm, like i'm i'm i feel like artificially r- yeah you feel it, it feels and like i don't drugs. like it i don't I, either like, I, say, yeah, I'm not I don't like it. it either if i wanted to feel like that i'd just do coke <laughs> uh which one pick one <laughs> Uh, here's one from Nixopunk. Do you think Bethesda added much value to the Xbox conference in, in regards to what they used to have at their own conference? It passed E3s. No, I not mean, I said that right at the beginning. Like, but I would also argue that if they hadn't been bought by Microsoft, they would not have done a conference this year because they didn't have anything to show. Or standards could have changed about what would, can or cannot be shown. It could have been Microsoft is like, no, we're not showing that. Whereas Bethesda maybe, you know, it showed Starfield like three right. years before it was supposed to. Like, it probably should have. Yeah. It showed Elder Scrolls way before that it probably should have. I mean, I still believe they showed that because that was the year they showed Fallout 76. And they knew <laughs> they needed they to, knew internally they needed something they needed some to give people to look cake. forward to. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I think that's literally what <laughs> happened there. That is a big part of my disappointment. Is that so? Maybe my expectations were out of whack because I watched these two big publishers do their own press conference for the last like twenty years, and now that you put them together, well, Bethesda's and... only done their own press conference for a few years. Bethesda? Yeah, they only started doing their own thing a few years ago. It was longer than that. It was, but you're but right; it, they didn't start back in like ninety nine. No, or it whatever. was like seven or seven years yeah. ago. Yeah, so, because like Adam and Morgan st- did the the hosting for that the first time, a couple times they did it like post G four. Yeah. Um, so that's where my disappointment is. The, ex- the expectations of what they used to do separately, I felt like when they combined, it wasn't as powerful as I thought it was going to be. I'm um, showing Fallout 76, like. I mean, you gotta show your ongoing product. Like, I guess. One way or the other. Like, I don't know. But that's what has shown that too. I mean, they, 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 in their own thing, they would have shown that. They would have shown a longer thing for Elder Scrolls Online. We should, probably would have had to sit through something about Elder, Elder Scrolls Blades. Yeah. Um, it's, but to answer his question, did it add much? No, not really. Not yet. There but was like, like a thirty-second teaser of Starfield, and the rest of it was like a wash. I, so. But but I would argue that that was more than a lot of the other companies they've bought added. You know, a couple months after they were purchased, you know, there was yeah. at least something there. But yeah, I guess so. It's gonna I, be I, a you while. You've got to realize Bethesda has been operating. It's not like it was just started when, right? Like, it, like it's been operating all this time. Like, well, so is Obsidian. So is yeah. Arcane. So is all of them. But like, you know, this stuff takes some time and. You know, even if Microsoft hadn't bought them, what was Bethesda working on for this year? Yeah. Nothing. Like, they, they, it was a down year for them. It was yep. going to be one way or the other. 
Uh, it's like we're not going to have a break, actually, before Square Enix. Mm-hmm. It's 11 Because we, sh- we wouldn't shut up. That's, right. <laughs> That's what happened. Uh, actually, I am going to stop it right there because I think Matt and I do need to hit the bathroom before... Uh, Speak for yourself. Yeah, I, I need to hit the bathroom. <laughs> um, we're going to leave the stream up. We're just going to take our mics down and leave the stream up, and we will be back in about five minutes to kick off the pre-show for Square Enix. Thanks for ever. I see there's tons of questions in here. Maybe we can answer more at the end of Square Enix if you have some stuff from Microsoft and Bethesda. Uh, but we just need a second of a break here before we kick off the next uh, press conference for Square Enix. So we're going to leave the stream up. Um, so don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back in like five minutes. See you guys soon.